Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Zhao Yang. We're bringing you special coverage of a science lecture coming to us from China's space station, the Tiangong. This is the fourth installment of the Tiangong class, where the astronauts in space will be interacting with young Chinese students here on Earth. It's scheduled to start at 3:45 p.m. Beijing time, so that is in about 15 minutes. It'll be given by the Shenzhou 16 crew: Jing Haipeng, Zhu Yangzhu, and Gui Haichao. The Taikunauts will present what life is like aboard the Mengtian Lab module on the Tiangong Space Station, and also the experiments that they've conducted. Well, joining me in the studio to watch the class and talk about it is Professor Yang Yu Guang. He is the vice chair of the Space Transportation Committee at the International Astronautical Federation. Now there are five classrooms in five cities: Beijing, Yan'an in Shanxi Province, Tongcheng in Anhui Province, Ningbo in Zhejiang Province, and Ujinaci in Inner Mongolia. Now we have our reporters joining us from some of these classrooms. We have Zheng Yibing in Beihang University, Beijing, Wu Lei at a school in Ningbo, and Yang Jinghao at the Yan'an Science Museum. So. Uh, hi guys, great to see you all. So Yibing, if we can start with you. So Gui Haichao,、uh, he is China's first civilian astronaut, and he is also a Beihang University professor. So must be a source of pride for the students there. What are the university students expecting from his class today? Well, yes, I can see. You can see the, the thousands of students and the teachers are gathering here at this indoor stadium at Beihang University, and I can feel the excitement of the students and teachers. And this place is very special because this university is also specializing in space science and engineering. And Gui Haichao, who is a Shenzhou 16 science payload expert, he comes from here, and he's also、uh, the professor, the doctoral supervisor here. So I can feel the excitement of all these students and teachers here. And joining me now is Mr. Li Jingxuan from Beihang University, and、uh, he's also a good friend and colleague of Gui Haichao, Professor Gui Haichao. Good to see you, sir. So tell us something about your feeling now.、Uh, I'm very excited. Because today there will be two thousand students from the universities and、uh, primary school and middle schools、uh, to attend this class. So, and、uh, of course, the most special is that the teachers are from space. So I think this is really uh, uh, special for Beihang universities. For me, I'm also very excited. My college colleague、uh, and friend, Professor Gui Haichao, will give lectures. On the flames and、uh, droplets under microgravities, so this is、uh, really special for us. So、uh, I think、uh, for me, I'm very excited. Well, thank you so much. And I also heard this is going to be the very first large-scale class for the student here at the Beihang University.、Yeah. University. Thank you so much for sharing with us with your feeling now. Well, that's perhaps Professor Li Jingxuan from Beihang University. Now, inside this stadium, everyone is excited, and we're expecting to see this detailed first ever introduction by Chinese taikonauts to the Mengtian Labs 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 capsule. And we're expecting to see that moment. Let's come down to the beginning. Of this live stream class here in Beihang University in Beijing. Back to you. Thank you, Yi Bing. This is Zhang Yi Bing at Beihang University. We'll talk to Wu Lei and Yang Jinghao a little later. First, let's go to our reporter Sun Ye, who's at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. Hi, Sun Ye. So, how's the preparation going there? Hey there, Jiayang. The Shenzhou 16 crew—they are ready for their very first live science class. Of course, this is the latest、uh, in the Tiangong class series. And we know the three Taikonauts—they all of them are veteran and seasoned educators, but they are still taking this class very seriously. Starting at Eight o'clock this morning. They've been trying to prepping for the class, and they've been fine-tuning every part of the class to ensure that this will be a class of a lifetime for the students. And they do have many exciting things lined up. That's including a flame experiment where the taikonauts will show how a Candle flame, flame behave differently、uh, in microgravity situation. Now,、uh, experts here at the Beijing Control Center say、um, it's safe to play with fire under guidance in space because they have done a lot of preparation beforehand, and they've especially chosen this experiment、uh, precisely because flames are pretty common,、uh, are a. 
pretty common sight on the ground, but then they behave very differently um, in China Space Station, and they do want to show how different that is. But of course, they have been designing the whole procedure, in t including the teaching aids, months before, and they've analyzed uh, all of the different um, uh, results coming from the combustion to make sure it's safe for the Taikonauts, it's safe for the space station. But the flame is really going to be special because that ball of flame will also, according to the experts, ignite the passion for science for the students. They also hope the class will be, well, will also ignite their uh, passion for science. So we will be seeing how the Taikonauts will show that to students nationwide. Jiao Yang. Thank you so much, Sun Ye at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. Well, let's go to Yang Jinghao now, who's at the Yan'an Science Museum. Hi, Jinghao. So how's uh, the museum preparing for this class? Yeah, Joy, I'm here at the uh, Yan'an Science Museum. Uh, this is one of the uh, first uh, museum of this kind established in China. It's first opened in 1987. And today about 90 college and middle school students from the city are gathering here to attend this much anticipated lecture. And I just talked to some of the students. They said they are very excited and, and uh, very much looking forward to the uh, scientific experiments to be demonstrated in the in a microgravity environment. And we can see uh, the students have prepared, have prepared some uh, little props and equipment on the desk. Uh, so during the lecture, uh, they will follow along the technots to uh, perform some of the experiments to better understand the uh, space. For example, they prepared the candles, yeah, and the uh, spiny tops. And uh, also, we can see this is um, a Marion cup. And uh, so, uh, during the uh, lecture, they will also be given the chance to raise questions to the Taikonauts. And also, from here, we can see uh, some of the students also bring here their self made models like this one. Yeah, now let's uh, talk to one of the students about their uh, uh, the, the model. <laughs> 它是一个火箭的模型，然后是花费了两天的时间去去组装它。然后我平时的话是因为比较喜欢这个航天的知识，是的。Okay. Uh, this student said he uh, spent two days uh, assembling this uh, rocket model. And right now, some primary students are uh, sharing stories about some uh, renowned scientists to better uh, let the attendees know about China's aerospace development. Uh, we know that the city of Yan'an has been hailed as a, a secret site of the Chinese Revolution and uh, the cradle of the new China. So uh, today, Today, uh, we, we, ex uh, the event expected to further uh, inspire the students to um, better pursue the uh, science in the future uh, because we know that China has um, promoted the so-called Yan'an spirit in recent decades, uh, which highlights the enterprising spirit, the self-reliance and hard work. So it's believed that this event is and um, will not only leave the students with fond memories, but will also encourage them to better pursue science in the future. Back to you, Jia Yang. Thank you so much, Xinghao. Now let's talk to our reporter Wu Lei, who is at a school in Ningbo City. Hi, Wu Lei. So good atmosphere over there. Hello, uh, Jiao Yang. Uh, we are now at the Ningbo Art Experimental School, affiliated to the East China Normal University. Uh, today, there are around 120 students here at Ningbo to participate in the space class along with the Shenzhou 16 crew. Uh, there are some primary school students and also uh, junior and senior high school students. And earlier before this uh, space class, uh, these students had already had an interaction with uh, Chinese senior scientist Ouyang. Uh, this is a special class uh, initiated by this school and uh, most of the school here, uh, students here are very uh, interested in the space technologies and uh, achievements and here and we can also see some handmade uh, art artifacts about this uh, space and arts and you can see this is a, a minor collector of in the Santon 
and uh, these artworks were made by the school students and also teachers uh, because these schools, the students are very interested to combine arts as well as uh, space technologies. And this is another artwork made by the students. It's uh, made a golden mine collector uh, in uh, Venus. And as we can see, there are very creative artworks and also shows the children's imagination and space dreams. And so this uh, space lecture uh, for the Shenzhou 16 crew is the first time for them to conduct a such space class. And over the past uh, few years, Shenzhou 13 and Shenzhou 14 crew already had several times of space classes. And the, all these kind of activities has inspired the dreams and explorations of young children. So I think most of the students here are looking forward to the very interesting experiments conducted by the Shenzhou 16 crew. And some of them may have some questions to ask the Shenzhou 16 crew. Back to Jiao Yang. Very great artworks over there. Thank you so much, Wu Lei in uh, Ningbo. Well, here in the studio, we have Professor Yang Yuguang with the International Astronautical Federation. Professor Yang, great to have you here as always. So we got a little preview from uh, Sun Ye earlier that uh, the astronauts will be playing with fire. Is that uh, safe to do? Uh, absolutely, it will be very safe. Uh, you know that we have a rack uh, inside the Mengtian module dedicated to the study of the uh, space physics related to the combustion phenomena in microgravity environment. This is really important. You know that uh, during history, they do have a similar disaster in the Mir space station. Uh, you know that uh, there, uh, there are some oxygen pr uh, production uh, devices in the Mir station before. Uh, and uh, during, during the, uh, the stay of the uh, Russian astronaut, uh, cosmonaut, also stay in the mirror station, they have to have some anomaly uh, on this producer uh, of oxygen. So a fire happened and even mm -hmm. make the disaster and even uh, some dangerous things happened to threaten the lives of the astronauts. So it is very necessary for us to study the uh, combustion of right. the flame in microgravity environments to ensure the safety of the astronauts, not only uh, to ensure safety, but also this is also very useful in the future to uh, the space physics uh, the, in the microgravity environment. And moreover, you see that we are uh, preparing for some uh, study on the material making in outer space. So the combustion also will be a very important part mm. of these studies. Yeah, so I mean, it's going to be a first for the Chinese astronauts, right? Um, can you also reveal to us some of the other experiments that we will be expecting? Well, uh, as your colleagues, Mr. Zheng Yibin has already mentioned, mm -hmm. this, uh, will, uh, this, uh, this 10 class will happen in the Mengtian module. You know, the Mengtian module is almost the most important part to, to clarifying scientific research in our Tianhe space station, because you know that the uh, Tianhe core module, uh, the major task is to uh, charge the whole station. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the Wentian module, uh, to some extent, can be the backup of the uh, Tianhe module. So uh, many of the resources were occupied by these uh, devices to control the whole station. Uh, so the Mengtian module has the largest number, 13 scientific research racks mm -hmm. inside the Mengtian module. And also, you know, that the uh, space physics will be mainly clarified, uh, these kind of uh, studies and uh, experiments will be clarified in the Mengtian module. So uh, today, an important part of their class will be the introduction of the all kinds of very complex racks inside right. this Mengtian module. And also, uh, I believe that most of the experiments will be related to the study in the Mengtian module. Uh, for instance, uh, although you know that we already have the similar uh, uh, King class, uh, uh, such as those in the uh, uh, Shenzhou 13 mission mm. uh, many years before, uh, about these uh, uh, physics uh, phenomenon in uh, microgravity environment, but today, this will be more and more complex, and some even related to their daily work and uh, research. And we'll see something very different. I mean, the Mengtian module is, is, was the last piece to have completed the Tiangong Space exactly, Station as well, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. More than uh, 30, uh, 20, 23 tons, mm. the total mass. So this will be definitely exciting to see it coming and see the lecture coming from the Mengtian module. Um, it, it must be quite challenging for the astronauts to be conducting these experiments in space. I mean, it's, it's not... You know, it, it's not as accessible as, as things are on Earth, is it? So exactly. Uh, you are quite right. You see that uh, for this kind of live stream uh, Tiangong class, uh, 
I, I believe that the most challenging thing is that the uncertainty. Right. You see, they are studying the very complex the uh, behavior of fluid or even two-phase flows, uh, either uh, two-phase flow between liquid and uh, uh, solid or uh, liquid and uh, gas. Mm. So these and the uh, phenomena are very complex. Even they uh, they've already practiced uh, uh, more and more uh, many times, but still there are some uncertainty in operating these kind of very complex experiments. So I see uh, to uh, not only to prepare the tools for demonstrating these complex uh, phenomena, but also they need more practice and moreover from the aspect of engineering you see that the class lasts for more than 45 minutes mm. so a uh, very smooth uh, stream on video and audio is also very very important because you know that the video and audio always requires a large amount of resources on the benefits of communication mm. so the Tianlian data relay satellite will play a very very important role to ensure the reliability and a smooth live stream uh, of this class and um, but of course there is a professional teacher amidst the crew of there. So as we were talking to Zheng Yibing earlier, Professor Gui Hai Chao, he, you know, he, he's from Beihang University. He studied there and taught there. Um, and he is also the first Chinese civilian to go to the space station, right? So talk to us about the, the composition of this crew and how it's different and, you know, the role that he plays. In uh, exactly. You see that Mr. Gui Hai Chao, a professor from the Beihang University, wear glasses. <laughs> uh, so this is the first time in China because, you know, that, as you mentioned... Oh, yeah? first, first astronaut to be up there with glasses. Uh, for China, it is. Oh. Of course, in other countries also there are no exception. There are some of the experts, especially the payload experts or some mission specialists wear glasses. They, are, they have nearsighted eyes. So uh, this shows that uh, our space technology becomes more and more practical. It is already safe enough and comfortable enough for civilians to go to outer space. Mm. Although you know that the most challenging phase of the, uh, this kind of uh, space mi station mission is uh, uh, lift off and landing. Uh, so these are very dangerous uh, phase of the flight, but these are charged by mo mostly by the commander and the pilot. So the other two uh, astronauts are required to have the quality to uh, piloting the ship. Right. Uh, but for the payload experts, it's quite uh, not, not necessary. And also, as you mentioned, all these three members of the Shenzhou 16 crew has a PhD degree. So this is mm -hmm. the first time for China. And moreover, you know that uh, Mr. Zhu Yangzhu and Mr. Gui Chao are not come from the Air Force of China. They are not pilots. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, we've already, this means that our technology on space travel is already very, very practical. And moreover, you see that it is a requirement of the uh, intensive and the complex scientific research mm. that requires a more professional scientif uh, scientist or engineer to come to our Tiangong Space Station. Mm -hmm. That should be very exciting. What are you most looking forward to, Professor Yang, just very quickly from uh, today's class? What do you? Uh, to my professional, no, I uh, hope that they can give more information about ultra cold atomic clock you uh -huh. see that uh, you, every day you use your mobile phone and use navigation uh, software. Uh, so it is ma based uh, mainly on uh, Beidou navigation satellite oh, or GPS. Yeah, sorry, I just have to break you off there. We'll get to see what you're looking forward to because the astronauts are yeah. there and getting ready. So this is there a they are in the Yeah. Mm. You can oh, see that in the volume. And they're starting now. Commander Jing Haipeng. Good afternoon, students. I am Tai Kunok. Zhu Yang Zhu. Good afternoon. I am Technologue Gui Hai Chao. Welcome to the Tiangong class. And this time, for the Tiangong class, we have five ground classrooms. They are from Beijing, in the Mongolia. Zhejiang, Anhui province, Shanxi province. Now we say hello to the students. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Tiangong class. Dear students, today we are very happy to be here to explore the mysteries of the science. So what will be the lessons today? Let's start our class. All right, in the previous Tiangong class, we get to know the core module and also the Wen Tian lab module. 
And today, we will be exploring the new classroom. So that is the Mengtian lab module. Let's take a look. So for the Mengtian lab module, we have a lot of the scientific racks. We have 13 spaces available for the racks. And also, we are able to provide some of the in and out services for the payload. And we don't have the sleeping areas and also the cleaning areas. However, we have the exercise space. Let's take a look at this one. So this one is the resistance exercise equipment. However, we have more functions for this exercise. So it will help us to build up our muscles. So we can do the scrub and also we can exercise our muscles to build up strength on our arms. All right, let's move to another area. Now we are coming to another area. We have many squares here, and in this place, we have a lot of facilities to support the operation of the Mengtian lab module. We have the uh, batteries and also we have some control equipment to support the normal operation and ensure a comfortable environment in the Mengtian lab module. Could also provide power heat and also gas supply for the operation of the racks. And this area, it is the uh, cargo airlock chamber. So for this airlock chamber, it will provide support for the extravehicular activities for the tachonauts. But for this one, it will help to move the cargoes. And we will change the pressure in this chamber. And also we have a payload transfer facility. So for this facility, we'll work with the robotic arms. This will help us to bring in a lot of the cargo inside of the module. And also, we are able to release some tiny satellites and the small spacecraft into the space. Now we are coming to the experimental halo chamber and this area is also a critical area for the lab module we could do a lot of work for example the studies for the combustion science two-phase science and also the high temperature material studies and this will help us to learn a lot of cutting-edge technologies so now I would like to invite our teacher, Mr. Gui, to give us more introduction about all of these racks. Let's take a look. So this one is the two-phase system. So now we would like to talk about um, the nature of these uh, different materials. For example, the uh, evaporation. For example, we will turn the water into the gas. For this two-phase uh, system, we will try to analyze the change of the evaporation, condensation, boiling and heat, pipe heat transfer etc. And this will help us to learn more about the fluid fixes and it could also provide a lot of solutions for us when we tackle some of the issues. Now we are moving to two different racks. One is the high precision time frequency rack. It combines a number of different atomic clocks. So it will send out a very precise time frequency signals. And this will help us to 
make more accurate the time in China and also in the world. And in this area, uh, actually, we have a very good condition, that is the microgravity condition. And now we are coming to the high temperature material rack. Now you could see there are a lot of tubes built into this high temperature material rack. So this temperature is above 1,600 Celsius degree. In this area, we could study a lot of new materials. So do you know what are the first batch of materials in this high temperature rack? Actually, for some of those materials has been sent back to ground with Shenzhou 15. So one is the semiconductor material. So it has a very high level of flexibility. So we could use that kind of materials to make a tube and a pipeline. And it will help us to upgrade the semiconductors. Now let's continue our journey in the racks. Do you know where is the coldest place? Actually, it is in this place. So that is the cold, the ultra-cold atomic physics rack. And this place will create a ultra-cold, low-temperature quantum gas. And also, it will give us a lot of uh, micro quantum phenomenon that we can see in our eyes. And this will help us to learn more about the quantum mechanics. Now we are going to the fluid physics rack. So under the microgravity environment, we are able to learn the law of the motion of the fluid. Especially we try to learn the new laws and the motions of the fluid. You may want to ask, what happens if all of these racks get some trouble? Of course, we have considered that. So that's why we develop another, what we call a maintenance plant. So this is the what we call the online maintenance and installation rack. Please take a look. In this one, the size is quite large. The volume is over 360 liters. And also we have the AR glasses. And also we have a very flexible robotic arm. And we also have a mobile maintenance platform. We have different ways for us to maintain, clean, and manage the payloads. Right this year, in February, we start the ignition experiment in the space station. And this happens in this rack, what we call the combustion science rack. So in this area, we are able to manage um, the ignition, and also we are trying to uh, control the exhausting gases. So for the ignition experiment, is done in this box. Also, we have the uh, imaging system so that we can capture the speed of the flame and also the shape of the flame. And last, I would like to give you an introduction of the last rack. That is the aerospace basic rack. And this one, now we are trying to do the heat management, and altogether we are doing five experiments in this rack. So all in all, we are trying to cultivate the micro LG in the micro gravity environment. Especially, we are trying to process 
degemination of the microalgae, and this is a brand new discovery for us. All right, so this is a very brief introduction about the Mengtian lab module. Any questions? Let's see if we have any questions from Beijing. Hello, and I just heard your introduction. Actually, myself feel uh, very proud of that the strong the scientific capabilities equipped in our space station. And I believe there is a combustion rack that's dedicated for combustion research. I mean, we talk about combustion that's quite normal in our day-to-day -day life. So I'm really curious, in that macro-gravity environment, combustion is the same or different? That's a very good question. I believe a lot of students may also have the same question. In this macrogravity environment, how that impacts the combustion effect? So let's lit a candle to see how that works. And also for the comparison, and I will also invite our teachers on the ground to also Lit a candle. All right. All right. What I'm going to do is here in the China Space Station, I will do the same thing. So one thing is that we don't want to put ourselves in danger. So we do a very thoughtful preparation. So we are ready. Don't blink your eyes. Right. It's already lit. And then I will also, for your better observation, let's put a black background behind the candle. And let's look very closely on the flame. So during this combustion, how that different from the space to the ground? So you can observe here, and in China Space Station, the flame of the a candle actually is form a dome shape or a spherical, but on the ground. It's more in the vertical where we talk about it's shoot up. So that's a very different in shape. Why the shape of the flame is different? Because, of course, gravity works here. So we talk about on Earth, hot gases from the flame rise while gravity pulls cooler air to the bottom of the flame. So there is that the reason creates both the shape of the flame and also that the effect we talk about that's the convection so that convection of the gravity make this different and here in space actually the flow of the air actually is to all directions so matter which air is flow to any direction it's always in these the spherical shape and also here in space station you could see actually it's not really strong flame as not in ground so you could see that it's not as strong as on the ground because on ground actually it's really that greedily searching for fuel but here you could see that's very different in space all right, one thing I would like to remind you that if you yourself alone do this combustion experiment, please always, always be well prepared to do so. And this is a very complex DA process involving the a physics and the chemical perspective and also very meaningful to our day-to-day -day life. And that the combustion experimental uh, the cabinets actually is a very nice place for us to do a very DAO round uh, experiment. And the right out actually can benefit us to better leverage the power of fire.
Yes, indeed. Just now we saw the miracle of fire. But talking about fire, what else we can think about? Water, right? In the previous lecture, we have shown you different experiences involved water, and there is a lot of really the AI catchy moments. So this time we will also talk about the water. Let's say any things we can find surprising. All right, so now I would like to make a small. Water ball. It is quite easy to make a water ball in the space station, but it's difficult to do it on the ground. Now, actually, I'm holding a regular ping pong bat. Now, I would like to use the ping pong bat to hit the water ball. Let's see what happens. Just take a look. Now you can see the water stick directly to the surface of the ping pong bat. Maybe we could do something else. So maybe we can try to play the ping pong with the water balls. Now I would like to have another try. I have a special made ping pong bat. Because for this bat, it is covered with a tower. Let's see if we can use one to play ping pong with the water balls. Right now we have another water ball. Here we go. Please pay attention. Just take a look. Now when the water ball hit the bat, now you can see the water ball did not stick to the bat. The water ball just like a regular ping pong ball. So we will try to see if we could play ping pong with the water balls. Be ready. All right, now I would like to turn around. I will see if I can beat you up in the space. It is very interesting to have this tournament. So in the future, we are able to use the water balls to play ping pong. All right. Very good command of the ball. I would like to ask a question. Why, when we are using this uh, tower, can drive the water ball away? So first of all, we have the surface tension, so the water ball is quite solid. And also for the uh, tower, it is actually made from the hydrophobic material. So for this hydrophobic material, we will drive the water away from the surface of the material. So actually we are using a lot of these hydrophobic materials in textiles. For example, for some of the coats, they are made from the hydrophobic materials. I would say the technology has bring a lot of benefits to our lives. As we all know that for the uh, tower, are made from the hydrophobic material. So how we use the tower to clean all the sweat? So when we are trying to dry out the sweat, so we are uh, actually touching upon the fibers that has been contained from the hydrophobic material. Do you understand? And just now, we are trying to use the special made ping pong ball to bat to heat the water balls. This is also we have another phenomenon that we call the correlation. Because we learned the momentum conservation in the physics class. 
So on ground, if we want to do the experiment for conversation, the conservation of momentum, we normally use Newton's cradle. But here in space, we have a simpler system for us to demonstrate the conservation of momentum. Let's take a look. So are you ready, Mr. Zhu? Yes. I'm ready for the next one. Here you go. So you could see here, we actually hidden a special tool. So you could see that this with the, a small grid that's 10 cm times 10 cm in size. So this is a grading close. Let me take a steel ball with me. So that's a 500 grams and 49.5 millimeter. So here I have a same steel bolt. So let me throw it to collide with the one that's in the stationary mode. So let's check the conservation of momentum. My first try. You got another try. So keep it straight. Do your best. All right. So this is a very nice one. So let me also try it out. Very nice one. So you could see that this tool that is still actually the, the balls when they collide between objects actually you could see and before collision and after collision you could see whether this also that the law of the momentum conservation actually ob observed or not. Actually, we could see that the total momentum of the system of the architect is conserved or not. That's a question for you. Let me also try a small ball. Let's see whether that's something different. Let's do a collision again. All right, that's not really strict collision. And try again. So, control my hands. Let's see whether that's a direct impact. Yes. Very nice one. I'll give you a chance. So, I'll give you a full mark. A very nice direct impact. All right. I keep one steel ball in stationary states. Very, very nice one as well. All right, you could see that the small ball after is collide with the big ones and then the small one back to Mr. Zhu. And also the a big ones actually continue the motion along the trajectory. So let's change a little bit. Let me use the bigger one to hit the smaller one. All right, you could see after collision, the two balls actually still move. All right. So let me show you again. So use the bigger one to hit the smaller one. You could see that the same situation happen again. So after calculation, I believe you can find that that's not this experiment, this collision. Yes. Either it's direct impact or not direct impact actually all follow the law of the conservation of a momentum. Actually, the physician who first actually mentioned this 
the law actually did not really do the experiment under these kind of conditions. It used the very basic logics and the simple conditions actually propose this law and also move the whole physics developed further. And that's also laid the foundation for us to really do the experiment here today, even in space. I believe that it's less salute to the great physicians. And also, we are talking about another law. It is about the angular momentum, especially for the spinning objects. They have the angular momentum. In the past, we have demonstrated uh, the body turning in the space and the tumbling um, T-shaped bar and also the spinning top, etc. Is maybe you still remember Ye Guangfu used to do the body turning in the space by moving his arms. And today I will use a spinning top to make the move. So this is the spinning top. Now I would like to show you the first demonstration. So now the top is in a still position. So first I will try to flow up. Now I would like to change the angle of the top. When I change the direction of the top, I didn't move much. Now I would like to do a second demonstration. Now I would like to make a spinning top. So let's do it together. So first we would like to turn the spinning top. Here we go. Now you could see we have a very fast spinning top. Now I would like to do the second demonstration. So now I would like to change the direction of the spinning top. Now you can see I already moved my body. I have made two moves. Now I will go back. Very nice move. So in these two experiments, actually, Mr. Gui has already changed the direction of the top. So my question is, why you are able to move your body with a spinning top? That's a very good question. In high school, we learn from the physics class. So force will create thrust, and also it will change the way we move. And this will also change the angular momentum. So in the first condition, we could see the angular momentum is zero with a steel spinning top. When I change the spinning top, the angular momentum remains the same. And this will have a very minor impact to my arms. So I will now move under the first scenario. In my second demonstration, you can see we have very fast spinning top and then we have a, a stronger angular momentum. So when I try to change the direction of the spinning top, it will create a much stronger angular momentum and it will give a thrust to my body and my arm. And then we are able to make a turn of my body. So how can we use this law? In our space station, we are using the same law of conservation of angular momentum, then we are able to move around in the space station. So we can imagine that our body is the space station, and our hands and our arms and the spinning top, they are the starting device which will help us to control our strength and also the thrust. So we are trying to create a stronger angular momentum. When we are changing the angular momentum, 
and then we are able to change the way how the space station works. And in the space station, we have set up a lot of devices to change the angular momentum. All of these devices has a weight for about hundreds of kilograms, but still it could help us to turn around in the space station. That is a very fantastic application. But we have to pay attention to the generation of the angular momentum. For sometimes it makes people to turn around, and also we have to consider if we want to move around the space station, we need to create a stronger angular momentum, which means we need a larger device. So this also reminded us that we should not just look at or consider the law of the conservation. We have to understand the reality and try to learn the nature of all of these laws and principles so that we can better make good use of those laws. For sometimes we, we are not able to understand the phenomenon, we are not able to understand the laws. And just now we also have the experiment to talk about the um, collision. This is also a demonstration of the momentum conservation. So please scan the QR code to follow us a public account. You could leave a comment. We are looking forward to hear from you. All right, so this is the experiment section. Now we will enter into the interaction section. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. So if we are ready, all right, let's see, our students are ready to ask questions. Are you ready? If yes, please wave your hands. All right, seems like you are ready. And now let's come to the interaction part. So maybe let's give the microphone to Inner Mongolian classroom. Any questions? Thank you. I'm from the Erdian Banner Middle School. My name is Dan Xinbian. I'm very honored to, on behalf of the Inner Mongolian classroom, to ask you two questions. I'm really eager to know the answers. So, can you really see the a special waste and any measures we are doing to protect the space station? Thank you. So that's a very nice question. So normally we talk about the space junk or space debris. First, yes, indeed, they do exist. Yes, and also a lot. So that also imposes a huge risk to China's space station. For us, we are also very curious. So we actually through the hatch to look at these space debris and also use the telescope to find those. So far, we haven't seen any space debris that are technically the a technical peoples uh, Earth actually help us put a very close eye 
uh, the dynamics of this space debris. If any potential risk approaching to space station, we do have plans to protect ourselves. So we could also change our DA orbit to protect ourselves and also on China Space Station we also have some special protective holds. So if, let's say, we collide with space debris, but actually we also same, we are well protected. Thank you. Next question, please. Maybe that's in my students from Zhejiang classroom. Thank you. Hello to the teachers from space. My name is Feng Yuxi from East China Normal University. School. So if you see at the in space, at the sun, actually it's the same shape or look as we see on ground. Be Mr. Zhu. All right, I will take this question. Thank you for your question. It's a really rich imagination, a very nice question. In space station, when we see Earth, because we actually above the ground that's 400 kilometers so we see the earth also in a very round shape and actually we see even a wider larger and mag more magnificent earth than you see from the airplanes and also we talk about the cloud we always say it's pure white right and when you see on earth you see that different color of clouds Let's imagine why we have different colors. So when we see sun here, actually I cannot really see the sun directly. I'm afraid to do so because there is not cover by the atmosphere. So the sunlight is way too strong, much stronger than you see the sunlight from the ground. So for when we doing the EVAs, we also use the special shade so let's say a sunglasses so we put on sunglasses to make sure that we protect our eyes well and when we sun rise and sunset yes we also can see that we can see 16 times of sunrise and sunset thank you all right let's continue now i would like to invite students from anhui Good afternoon. I'm from Tongzhen High School. My name is Yao Yao. I would like to, on behalf of Anhui Province, to raise the question. You just mentioned about a lot of the uh, wrecks. So my question is, what is the uh, high precision that can be achieved with the high precision time frequency rack? Now I would like to turn to Mr. Gui to answer your question. So you have raised a very good question. We just talked about the high precision time frequency rack. I have said that it has been composed with a combination of atomic clocks. So we all talk about that the precision is very high on the ground. However, in the ground, when we are using the cold atomic clock, and then it has a very extremely high time frequency and uh, high precision. This will be help to support the physics analysis and studies, and also to verify the theory of relativity and also it will help us to work with the satellite system thank you for your question all right next question i would like to invite students from shanxi to ask the question Dear Technologues, good afternoon. I'm from Yan'an Number One Middle School. I would like to raise the questions on behalf of Shanxi Province. So, in this space, what measures you were taken to deal with the adverse reactions when you are suffering in the microgravity environment? I think this is quite a technical 
question. I would like to invite the engineer to answer your question. Thank you for your question. I believe you must attach great importance to the manned space program, especially when we are coming into the space. In the microgravity environments, we may have some sufferings. For example, we don't have a lot of strength in our muscles. However, the researchers, they have gave us a lot of measures to protect us. For example, we are wearing the space suit and also the precious uh, trousers, and also every day we are doing a lot of uh, exercise. We also have the running machine and the bicycle machine, and especially in Mountain, we also have the resistance exercise machines. And also we have some devices to help us to prevent from the bone loss. And also we have some tiny devices. For example, we have some special equipment to help us to stay healthy. And by doing all of these exercises, we are able to deal with those adverse reactions caused by the microgravity environment. As far as we know, all of these preventive measures work, and this will ensure our mental and physical health, and this will enable us to work effectively. Dear students, due to the time limits, one last question. I would like to leave this chance to the students from Beijing. Hang Tianyuan, teacher, you are welcome. I am Beijing Hang Kong Hang Tianyuan 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 Another technical and professional question. Now I would like to turn over to our payload expert to answer your question. Yes, indeed, in the space station, it is not like the car coming in the highway on the ground. We don't have a specific reference point, but we have some uh, sensors to monitor the location of the space station. For all of these sensors, it's just like eyes. It will detect the direction of the Earth and also the space station. And on the ground, when we have the mobile phone, we can use the Beidou navigation system. And actually, we also have the Beidou navigation system in the space station. And this will help us to understand the location and the position of the space station. And also, there is a special path for the space station. So that is the orbit. When we try to learn the orbit physics, we are able to understand the current position of the space station, and we are able to have a projection to understand the trajectory of the movement of the space station. Thank you again for your question. Very well said. Today, I feel like students actually raised a lot of really nice questions, really professional questions, actually. And it sums up to you. All right. Time flies, isn't it? Now, we come to the end of our Tiangong class. I know you must have a lot of questions you would like to ask us. And also, please scan the QR code, and we can also have the follow-up sessions there. As you all know, China's space station right now has been completed, and now come to the phase of application and development. That is also a milestone of China's space program, also the pride of China. 
I believe that you are very lucky and also we are very happy because we can work inside the space station and to really to raise your interest in space. I hope that after you find that's very interesting and you can develop your interest and continue your interest to a longer term. I believe that it's also our endless efforts actually that propel us to continue our dream and finally my dream come true. The things may be look dif difficult, but as long as you make efforts, the things do happen. So hope that we will see you really show yourself and make yourself shine. Technology has really profoundly impacted our life like never before, and China has our own space lab. I believe there is also the endless possibilities that we could do a lot of scientific researches and please really work hard on Earth. We are waiting you here in China Space Station. Dear classes, the youth strive, the country can survive. You are the future of the country, of the nation. Please cherish your time and also seize your opportunities and also appreciate at the time. And please also dream big and also make that happen. We wish you and make your dream come true. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye class. And that there is the Shenzhou 16 crew streaming live from the Tiangong Space Station. Well, that was great fun to watch, right, Professor Young? So, I mean, obviously for you, none of the results would have been a surprising uh, result, right? But what was visually most interesting for you to see? Well, to me, of course, today is this is a really interesting class, and the most uh, what impressed me most is the burning of the candle. Uh -huh. You see that we've already demonstrated the behavior of uh, solid, of liquid, or even the two-phase flow uh, during the uh, previous classes. As you mentioned, this is the fourth Tiangong class, but today it is first time we demonstrate the combustion uh, phenomena. So this is really complex and even a little bit dangerous. So uh, this is a very very interesting class, and also exerts the curiosity and also enthusiasm of the young people, especially not only those uh, students from the uh, high school, the, uh, the, the, the pupil from the primary schools, and also today we have also the attended from the universities. So I believe this will be very useful for China to uh, make more young professionals uh -huh. to enter with space field and promote the high uh, technology field of China. Absolutely. It made me curious about some things too, which I'll ask you about after the show. Thank you so much, Professor Yang Yugong, You're joining welcome. us here. And that's it for our special coverage of the science lecture conducted from the Tiangong Space Station. We'll leave you now with some highlights from the class. I'm Jiayang in Beijing. Thanks for watching.